Well, a very good evening and welcome to each and every one of you joining us here for this week's Your Manchester. Yes, a programme all about Manchester for you lovely people who love the city just as much as we do. But we're out and about in the heart of Greater Manchester, aren't we? We are. We're at a very special location known as Untrafford Centre. Mm -hmm. And we're going to tell you a little bit more about that later on. We've also got our titters who's been on a bit of a ramble. And I also got this week the privilege of checking behind the scenes and what goes into making a brand new music called and Juliet so there is loads going on make sure you're subscribing right now and make sure you're clicking that little bell just there it's so exciting and it's all coming up only on your, your Manchester, Manchester. Exciting, isn't it? It's brilliant this. Mm. We are here mm. at the John Lewis yeah. in the Trafford Centre for a very special reason. It's coming up to our first birthday anniversary. We've been on air on your Manchester for a year. It doesn't make sense, does I it? Know. But we don't want to be wearing these rags, do we? No, we definitely don't. So what better than getting yourself a nice personal shopper experience? And how does it work here then, this service? Because you must get so many people walking through the doors with lots of different kind of briefs for you. We do, so we can get people people coming in for a pair of jeans or we can get people coming in for a full wardrobe overhaul and the best thing about this service is it's completely free. Do completely you know, I, free service. I never knew that because you always think yeah. you're stylish, you must have a kind of like millionaire who's yeah. or you just you just avoid it, don't yeah. you? Yeah, there's, right. there's no minimum spend either, so you can come in, get a bit of advice, try on, have a good two-hour session with us in here, completely free of charge, and we do all the hard work for you. And no pressure as well. Nope, and we'll advise on what body shapes, what shapes suit you, colours, everything that you need to know about fashion. Oh, it's exciting, and the thing is, it's a lovely environment as well, yes. because I think sometimes yeah. when you're shopping, and especially for, you know, an occasion or something in particular, you just, you know, in the normal changing rooms, this is fabulous. Yeah, you've got all the space in here, you know, we've pre-selected already, you can sit down and have a glass of Prosecco if well, you like, bit of cake. It. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Oh. Very nice. And it makes you feel special, doesn't it? It does. It does, especially for a special occasion like what you two are doing today. Brilliant. Well, I think we're going to put Emma to the test. Yes, and, uh, I'm intrigued. Shall we crack on? Yes, let's. Let's. Okay, so I'm picking this for Michelle today. Um, the colour will be fantastic on her. Um, really strong, bright colour, which I've seen her wear when I've watched her on TV before. I'm going to choose this for Belinda today. Um, the colour would be perfect for her. I know she really likes strong colours. Having the V-neckline is very flattering for her shape and the wide legs, she's got the height to pull this wide leg off. So it'll be really interesting to see what this looks like when we try it on later. And then another one I'm going to pick for Michelle today would be this one with the snake print, which is really on trend at the moment. This is very different to what Michelle would normally pick from what I've seen before, so it's been interesting to see this on her. With her only having a slight frame, it would really nip her in on the waist and have this really flowing fabric at the bottom, which would be perfect for her. I'm bagging everything. Hey, it's got and shoes. I'm in love, in love with these shoes. I would never put you in yellow before. I would never put stunning. me in yellow, Emma. You're a genius. <laughs> this is something I avoid. Really? Yellow, like play because I just think blonde hair. Yeah. It's not really good. Yeah, so it's the shade and tone you go for. So we wouldn't put you in mustard. We wouldn't go for mustard with you. We always go for the real bright tones against your skin tone and hair colour. Yeah. Because back in the day, I don't know if you did this because we are quite old school. Um. You always kind of go for like, oh, if I've got a yellow dress, but I've got yellow shoes. That's right, yeah, yeah, it's and match, all about no, the yeah. And you've made. I, I, I was just going to say, <laughs> because for a larger lady like myself, you've got to get the right cut in the right place, because if you're too high there, then you look like that, and then if you're too low there, then you look like that, and you've just done wonders. She's made you look classy. Well. Yeah. With a nice nude shoe and nude handbag, it does keep it classy. Oh, it so pulls good. you in on the waist, and the nice sleeve. And bright pink as well. Mm -hmm. It's cracking. Compliments your hair. I've seen. It does, doesn't does, it? Yes. I've seen Melinda in bright colours, but it's kind of been red, which I think yes. has been a bit yeah, harsh. too harsh. Yeah. And that is absolutely. It looks gorgeous. It looks that. <laughs> Shall we see what else we've got? Shall we see? Go on, I'll show you. Go on. <laughs> Well, I know, and then look at 
shoes as well. Yeah, and they're dead comfy. Well, they wouldn't look. think it, but they are really, really comfy. They look lovely. I know. Do you like what I'm wearing? You have totally transformed. I have to say, I'd never like to say about your outfits, but mm -hmm. this... Classy. It's not classic, you were classy before, but mm. this is quite cool. This is Cool? This is a new you. Am, am I looking younger? Is that what it is? Very on trend. I'm, I'm on trend. On trend. I know, absolutely. As opposed to be stuck in the 80s. <laughs> hey? Your shoes. Look at them shoes, aren't they just everything? Yeah. So what were you colour thinking? blocking again? Yeah, colour yeah. blocking. Yeah, it's the way forward. And an handbag. Because again, normally, you'd go match the handbag with the shoes, wouldn't you? Yeah. No. No, we never match these days. No? No, even for wedding outfits, we get ladies coming in for wedding outfits and they want fascinated bag shoes matching. No, we don't That's do that anymore. thing of the past. Yes. Definitely is. I have to just tell you my two favourite features of this dress. I'm just going to put that there for a second because it's got my two it's got pockets. Yeah. Right? It's got all of it. Sexy wow. swim! <laughs> Look at well, you! I can still get my pins out for everybody as well. Well, I have to say, this is a nice kind of wrap dress and it mm -hmm. actually feels, I don't know, just there's something about Would it. Would you have chose that yourself, Michelle? Possibly not, only because with me being only like five foot two, yeah, or five foot three, if I kind of like put extra on me, um, I would have thought I couldn't get away with a long dress. Yeah, and I do st tend to, you know, stay away from because my mum used to say, "Oh, she looks like Granny Grunt." Remember that old-fashioned phrase? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel really yeah, sophisticated. The really flattering on you as well. Yeah, nipped in on the waist, it's still showing off your petite figure. There you are. I just don't know which one we're going to choose. Well, I don't either. Uh, we look amazing in both. Spoiled for both choice, aren't we? I think what we need to do is get Emma to choose and she makes a decision for us. Okay. Alright, okay, right. okay. Should we go in there while she decides? Right, well, we'll hide again. Oh, you look fabulous. I do, don't I? I look fabulous too. This is ever so comfy. Oh, look at this. Hey. Ta ra. She's a knicker. I've been getting your back. Well, we look wonderful, don't we? I'm absolutely look amazing. loving this. What made you choose these outfits in particular? So I've seen you before, Michelle, in bright colours, you know, on your Instagram, and I just knew that that yellow would be perfect for you. And it is, but like I said earlier, we wouldn't go for a mustard with you because of your complexion and your hair colour, that bright yellow really complements your skin. And the fit's perfect for you as well with your petite frame, it just shows off all your figure, really good length. You know, we've complemented it with the bright red as well. I'm totally it, sold it's an amazing job. But what about Belinda then? Yes. I mean, the stripes, you know, you can wear that in so many different ways, but this is just glamorous, isn't it? It is glamorous. You are. Especially for the occasion as well, you know, you want to be glamorous. It's a year anniversary, isn't it? I know, and the thing is, now that we look amazing what we're going to do with uh, our titters Colin well I believe you do a men's services we do yeah we've had the men's service going a year now um, and it's just starting to pick up so you know we get men in all the time coming for a new pair of jeans or if they've got a wedding a lot of the time it's the wives ringing up saying oh, please can you just help yeah. <laughs> and we can you get to sit here with a drink and not have to do any of the shopping and you just told me <laughs> what to wear that is the perfect experience yeah I've spied a few beers going on in there as well uh -huh. yes we cater for everybody absolutely now remind us how can you book this service and again it's free so completely free using it it's amazing yeah, completely free like i said earlier we are busy this time of year this is our busiest time and um, people are booking in online themselves you know they're searching us on johnlewis.com finding our services and booking in that way or they're coming in mentioning to one of the partners on the shop floor and they can book them in in store as well or they can just ring up the call center it's that easy it's that easy isn't it yeah now, are you going to come to our first birthday party? We will. We oh, would love have to. to be there yes, because, we would love to. Know, we want the fabulous team for we our do. fabulous show. We do. And we're going to look amazing. You are going to look amazing. Thank you so much. You're, You're very, very welcome. Much. Happy to have you both experience. here. Yeah, and just amazing outfits. Do you want more time? Cheers. <laughs> do you know, I feel like. Oh, titters, because we've come out for a bit of a walk now we're out of John Lewis. We've had a very good walk, haven't we, yes. And he likes his walking. He likes his walking. But where's he been this week? Well, let's find out. In 1945, while Celia Johnson and Trevor Howard were having a brief encounter at Carnforth Station, wartime evacuees were catching trains to travel back to their parents and a war-damaged Salford. They were travelling from Silverdale, the next station up the line. The village and the residents of Silverdale had provided a wartime safe haven with bonds created that lasted a lifetime. 
My Silverdale walk starts at the National Trust Free Car Park at the end of Emsgate Lane. It's next to the Scouts and Guides campsite. Then you enter through a gate into Eves Wood to start the ascent to the Pepper Pot along the well-managed pathways. The pathway is well signposted along the way. We reach the Pepper Pot, a monument built to commemorate Queen Victoria's Jubilee in 1887. In 2012, in commemoration of the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II, a second monument was placed. This young family remind me of myself and my kids around about 25 years ago, just enjoying the view. The next stage of my journey took me through gates and over stiles before I arrived at Arnside Tower. In the centre of Middle Barrow Plain, built in the 15th century, the ruins stand looking quite impressive in the shadow of Arnside Knot. This seemed a lovely place to stop, open my flask, have a drink and have a butty and relax. And then get ready to do part two. Speak to you next week. But I reckon this is going to be one of the big hitters, do you? This is Shakespeare as you've never, ever seen it before. I think we should have a look at the little VT. think so. Come on then. We are here at Impossible Manchester for the press launch of a fabulous new musical coming to Manchester here from September the 10th to October the 12th. We were lucky enough to speak to some of the cast and creators behind the show, simply known as And Juliet. Here we are, everybody, joined by the one and only Shakespeare and Juliet, everybody. Now, figure that out for an interview. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> there's not many times you can say that, is there? Exactly. No. exactly. What were you to expect from the show? Oh, well, um, I'm, yeah, sure it's turning to me. Um, and Juliet is, we basically, we, we meet our show at the point when Shakespeare is, is deciding on how to end Romeo and Juliet. Right. And he's written the end of the show, and he's decided that, you know, Juliet's going to fake her death. Romeo's going to turn up without being told she's faked her death. Yeah. Be distraught, kill himself. She wakes up, then decides to kill herself. In his mind, that's how the story's going to end. Yeah. And then... Anne Hathaway, Shakespeare's wife, obviously, uh, challenges that and says, hold on, hold on, why, uh, why, are you, uh, why, are you, why, is, why is she making this decision to kill herself when they've only known each other for four days, which, of course, is ludicrous. Yeah. And, then it, and then we have this playful... I'm glad somebody's finally said that. The yeah. <laughs> story is Juliet waking up and essentially choosing a second destiny, a, a second chance at life, a second chance at love. She goes on a whole new adventure and she meets some extraordinary people along the way. Uh, and behind the scenes, we've got William Shakespeare and Anne Hathaway who are renegotiating what this ending might be. There's not a lot about their relationship, but there's a lot of assumptions about their relationship, good or bad. No one really knows, but in this production, they've decided that they are very much in love and they have a relationship which is very much based on, on their wittiness and um, their little sparring jibes at each other, but it's all based with an undercurrent of love. And the <laughs> songs sound fantastic. And I think everybody's got a memory of what the song should be exactly. or was. And now you're, you're reintroducing them to the actual meaning and the heart behind the song, exactly. aren't you? Exactly, and, and, and that's what I always say about, with Hit Me Baby One More Time in particular, we all know that, you know, the version that we've heard, Britney Spears, you know, really kills it on that version. But to hear it the way it's done with Bill Sherman and Dominic Falocara, their orchestrations, when the strings come in, it just makes you think of it in a completely, completely different way. It strips it right back, mm -hmm. you actually, draw into the words and it, it makes so much sense in the story you don't even realize how much i was saying sense. that when i was listening to you today exactly. it suddenly actually makes sense exactly. it's not just a girl in a schoolgirl outfit exactly. in the locker rooms you know what i mean it suddenly Absolutely. makes sense and, and i like to think that we're a celebration of both art forms yeah. uh, we're not a pop concert but equally we're not like your normal new musical we take both elements and we mix them into this really special place where story is always the driving force but we have these kind of pop performative elements to it as well what's wonderful about uh, Bill Sherman, the, the arranger, the orchestrator, is um, you'll definitely go, oh, I know this song straight away, but he's just added some strings or it's a slower version of a pop song that you know. And um, it feels very familiar, but also he's made everything fit the plot. These songs are iconic for a reason, because the artists who originally sung them are phenomenal and they've made these songs huge hits around the world. But there's also something really exciting about giving them to a new generation of artists. So Miriam Teak, who grew up with these songs, and saying, and now give us your version of this song. And, um, and not 
feeling like they have to replicate anything, but making a connection of what that song means to them. How are you going about choreographing this then? Because I'm guessing a lot of these songs are that fast paced, you've got lots of dancing all the time. Yeah, there's a lot of dancing. We have a lot of incredible dancers in the cast. Dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think they're energized, okay, but um, energized. energized dancers. But you know, like we're, we're definitely, like Luke said, we're starting from a place of story, but we're inspired by the sort of epic scale of a pop concert. I mean, I'm not going to give away too much, but Shakespeare even gets his groove on a little bit. <laughs> really? <laughs> Maybe. There, Maybe, everybody. unless 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 they cut me. Yeah. But... And how are the? Oh God. <laughs> Which could happen. You couldn't really cut Shakespeare, could you? <laughs> <laughs> um, you could cut his dancing. <laughs> Maybe he danced. Well, we would never did. know. Of course, he danced. Yeah, he must have. He, he must have danced. He was a lad. He was a, yeah, he was a total lad. I shake my tush a fair bit. Yeah. You do probably more dancing than I do, actually. I don't know. I, I, I move a little. I move. I'm a strong mover. I'm a strong <laughs> mover. Um, I do have a little bit of movement in this. There point. is a lot of dancing though for the ensemble. It's yeah. very. Oh. My God, it's these really hip hop great. dancers blow my head off. They're the, so they are some, good. They are some of the best dancers in the country. They so are like amazing. Super energetic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And what do we expect to see visually then on stage? So, uh, look, we're, we're proud to say that we're a big, ambitious new musical. Um, it's uh, it, The design is epic. You know, it's. Uh, I, I think the producers won't mind saying that we're, we're we're big budget and we're, we're going for it. And that's why we're working so hard on getting the material right in all the workshop stages, because there's no point building a big set and then realizing that you're going to cut, cut these moments. The costumes look amazing. The costumes look amazing. Where do they lead themselves to? To the original era or have they been kind of? It's kind original era. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like a, yeah, like a modernized take on, on the Renaissance period. Right. So I can't say too much about it, but it's it's exciting. It's like the merging of two completely different eras. And we actually, to be fair, we haven't we've only seen mood boards. We haven't actually seen ideas, but we know that it's going to be a kind of modern take on the nice spirit, which I love because I think it's all going to be glam and fabulous. It will be and I hope I wear glam. nice nice dresses. You will. Is uh, Romeo in his tights? Oh. Uh, I think he'll be in tight clothes. I can't tights. guarantee if it's yeah. all tights or maybe leather trousers that will. Do you know what I mean? It will be like that kind of. Modern tape. We've seen sort of treatments and stuff of uh -huh. where they're going, and we've seen some. Are of you the wearing a frilly collar? Oh, I don't know. No. If I am wearing, apparently, if I am wearing a a, a ruffle, it's going to be a sexy ruffle. So. Really? So, which is, I need as much sexy as I can get. Uh -huh. if I'm honest. So. Of course, of course. Yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. So, hopefully, it's going to be a bit trendier than uh, I'm puff off. sleeves and and a, and a, and a, and a scrape back hair and a large forehead. But that, that would work. I could see that <laughs> working, yeah. I mean, of course, it was some, some, some yeah, sort of yeah. modern day, then, modern, modern version. Day. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So we're, we're excited to see yeah, you. We don't know what you want. Oh, I'm going to do hyphenated word. Contagiously joyous. I'm going to say a crazy explosion of joy. Joy. That's four and, words, but. And I say, uh, I'm really, really funny. It's not actually words, but um, no, they're sentences. Like this show is just thrilling. I have had the best time working on it for the last few years, and I cannot wait for the audience to see it. It's so brilliant, and we just we we don't want to let too much out. You just you just have to come. And uh huh. See it. Are we really not going home in my car? I'm not getting in your car. You nearly killed me. All right, well, we're going to have to... We'll have to go on the metro. Yeah, but I don't know where to go. Where am I right. going to get home? Where am okay, I going Okay, right. To? Village. That's, That's not my need. village, though. Who loses village? Is I it? don't know, but there's no rainbow flag. It's not mine. Oh, do you know what? Right, when we do actually get home, what have we got to look forward to on next week's show? On next week's show, we've got a beautiful charity called Mood Swings. They're going to be telling us how exactly we go about dealing with little problems in our old noggin. Well, that sounds really, really good. I mean, we're going to have the fun as usual. Of course, we're going to have our titters. We are. But people have to subscribe and click the dingle dongle bell. Absolutely. And where will they find us? Only on. Manchester. <laughs>